Uh, my name's Tom Lee. Um, I'll be giving a presentation on open source and big business. Uh, Bob's already taken a lot of the, uh, the thunder, um, which a lot of his message actually sort of, you know, comes up in this presentation. So um, hopefully I'll just be able to elaborate on that. Um, so just a quick overview. Essentially, I'll be talking about uh, what we do, our clients, um, how open source fits into our sort of business model. Um, because we're not an open source company, uh, but we do tend to apply open source to meet our clients' needs. Uh, so as I said, I'm a senior consultant for Shine Technologies. Um, we're a software consultancy with offices in Melbourne and Brisbane. Brisbane one's very, very recent. Um, I'm also an open source contributor. I've uh, con contributed some sort of uh, non-trivial patches to C Python core, because um, I've, I've got a geeky interest in compilers and parsers and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've also contributed patches to Node, Rails, and various other open source projects, actually as part of my work with Shine. Um, so yeah. So our clients, uh, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll give you a quick run through of A, who our clients are, and, and B, the sort of work that we're doing for them. Um, and the sort of work that we're doing that, that sort of incorporates open source anyway. Um, NAB, for example, we, we went out there and um, it was essentially installing, configuring Hudson instances. Um, not a lot of actual software development there, but we, we were delivering a, a, what, well, real business value to, to those guys. Um, because essentially they, they didn't have automated processes in, in, certain, in certain projects. Um, and, you know, Hudson, if, if any of you have ever used it, has anybody used Hudson? Yeah? Cool. Um, yeah, Hudson's just a, a great flexible tool. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, they've also just recently, and it's not something that we were sort of directly involved with, but they've started using Git internally, or started switching over to, to Git from, I think it was Clearcase before that. Um, and the, the transformation was just, yeah, it, it's, it's still still ongoing, um, and very very kind of cool cool to see that thing happening in a, in a place like a bank. Um, anyway, continuing on, um, census, we're doing a bit of, a lot, a lot of Node.js actually. Um, the City Search website uh, is uh, one, of our, one of our main projects out there. Um, census has actually opted to go ahead and use Node.js for the, for a re-platform, they're moving away from a propri proprietary CMS over to uh, a custom-built CMS built on Node. Um, what else are we doing at Census? Uh, their intranet is moving away from the same proprietary CMS to Joomla. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of really good stuff happening in the open source space out at Census at the moment. It's, uh, really good to see. Uh, Loyalty Pacific, uh, I'm not too familiar with. Um, I've never actually been on, on site out there, but I do know that they've been using OpenCMS, which is a, a Java-based CMS. Uh, Lufthansa Technic, where we've got Ruby on Rails on planes, um, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and, and a whole bunch of others. Uh, it's sort of speaks and specs of, of open source you know, development for quite a few of our clients. So, I guess before I start talking about consulting is to define, a, a good thing would, to be would be to define what a consultant is. Um, um, you know, it's, it's somebody who provides professional or expert advice in a particular area of expertise. That means that people are paying you for your opinions um, and your expertise. Um, and I believe that this will actually translate to tangible value, which sort of touches on what, what Bob was saying earlier. Um, we're, so we're, we're an open source, well, we're not an open source company, um, but we use open source technologies to deliver business value to our clients. Um, and as, as consultants, we should really be striving to deliver optimum value to our clients. And in our opinion, that's not necessarily saying, 
you know, open source all the time is the best solution. Um, you should be looking at delivering optimum value. Um, and open source is part of our toolkit to do just that. So in terms of selling big, big business on open source, we don't really do a lot of pitching open source necessarily unless it's kind of the obvious solution. So somebody says, hey, we need to do X, and we can say, oh, great, you can use you know, this open source project or that open source project. It'll save you, you know, all this money and be great. Um, rather than going down you know, proprietary path. But, uh, or, or they're already using it as well. We will sometimes go, go in there and they'll say, hey, we've got this um, you know, Ruby-based system that was written three years ago. Uh, the old developers you know, sort of annoyed us. We don't want to use them anymore. So can you guys sort it out? Um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, where, where they've sort of, the, the relationship between the the people providing the support and the business sort of didn't want it working out. And so, you know, that's one of the benefits of open source. You know, if that relationship doesn't work out, you can sort of say, hey, well, we can do that instead. And yeah, it's, it's really powerful for the business. Uh, so yeah, the, when they are using open source, it does tend to be sort of tried and tested stuff. I've listed Ruby and Rails on there. Um, we're starting to see lots and lots of, well, have been seeing for a while now, lots and lots of Ruby on Rails. Um, even though I'm not necessarily from an enter enterprise perspective, they would sort of call it tried and tested. Um, things like PHP as well are sort of starting to make inroads. Um, again, it's one of those things where, you know, if it's not Java and .NET, then you sort of have to jump through hoops to, to get it accepted in the enterprise. And yeah, anyway. Um, anyway. Getting back to what I was saying, uh, these, these big uh, commonly accepted open source projects are the ones that you need to get in and say, well, hey, we can support that. We've worked with that before. Um, we've delivered solutions using that before. Um, and that's a good way to sort of get in the door there. So as I was saying, um, big business is generally conservative with what they choose. Uh, so stick to the big projects. Um, but the bleeding edge stuff isn't entirely unheard of. E.g. census city search node. Um, they were using they were using node before before they had a stable release. We had the API changing underneath this. Um, we had promises disappear from node. Um, if anybody's used node, instead of using if you ever use a JavaScript callback, a promise is kind of like a, a callback that you can sort of say, okay, if it's successful, then do this. Otherwise, do that. And they, did, they did away with that entire concept and replaced it with two callbacks. So you pass two callbacks to a function instead of, anyway. Um, so yeah, and again, as I was saying before, the good business relationships um, should be trumping this proprietary lock-in that, that comes with uh, closed systems. Um, you shouldn't be stuck with a vendor just because you've chosen their particular software solution. You know, the only thing that's stopping, you know, you or or, or you being like supporting supporting a, a software solution um, is the fact that their license won't allow you to. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's I think it's just such a, an important thing for um, business to be made aware of in particular. Uh, yeah, so exactly what I was just saying. Um, I mean, there, there are some sort of secondary benefits. Um, I sort of don't see them as, as huge benefits, and, and that's the, the initial out, outlay being less. You know, so quite often open source is free. I mean, yes, you might pay a whole lot, you know, to, to get some arbitrary commercial closed system installed, um, but really over the lifetime of the system, that's not always going to be the case. I mean. The flip side of that is ongoing licensing costs and all that sort of thing as well. But you know, um, you also get benefits from features and bug fixes delivered by the community. So development continues rolling along without you having necessarily to do anything. I mean, the flip side of that is that it's undirected effort, so it's not necessarily stuff that's going to be useful to you. Um, but you know, obviously, that gives you the capability to be a part 
of that project. Like I, I know, I know a lot of what what goes on in the corporate world. Sometimes it seems to be that they'll say, "Oh well, we'll take that and we'll make changes to it, and we won't contribute those changes upstream." And really, that just creates more problems. And I'll go into that in a little bit. But. Okay, so yeah, I think I've covered most of that already. So, getting big business to give back. Um, this, this has been an interesting one. Um, for us, it's sort of dependent on, dependent on who the client is, um, our relationship with them, so on and so forth, what the project, what, what the project is as well. Um, I mean, we've, we've done a, a, a lot of continuous giving back um, just as part of our work with uh, Census, for example. Census has been, for me anyway, one of, one of the, the main ones where I've acti actively sort of gone, Okay, well, we've we've got this bug, fix it, um, checking the change locally, uh, create a patch, send it off upstream, and then when they do the next release, you know, that's incorporated, everything's great, you know, again, th they don't necessarily have to take the patch from you, but y you know, you you sort of do what you can, and it's it's just one of those things where if they don't accept your patch, it's just one of those things that you have to manage. Um, that you'd probably have to be doing anyway, even if you weren't trying to contribute back upstream. Um, so something that, and this, this is something that I personally took on board um, as part of my geeky interest in compilers and all that sort of thing, is I, I wrote a template language for Node, um, and I actually started using it in the, in the City Search project. Uh, because at the time, uh, because of all the, the fluctuations in the API and all that sort of stuff, uh, all the template languages that we had available sort of, you know, weren't the best or wouldn't compile or seek faulted or, you know, um, so Jazz was sort of uh, a custom made template language that, you know, compiled and ran. <laughs> um, and it, it was a lot of fun to put together and, you know, we've, we've had the odd contribution from outside and all that sort of thing as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, it, it really, if, if you can convince your clients to give back upstream, uh, it's just such a huge benefit to, to everyone, um, most, like, especially to the business, which is one that you're trying to keep happy um, in terms of upgrades, the less changes you make to the core system that don't make it back upstream, the better, um, for obvious reasons. Um, and it also has a knock-on benefit of, you know, sort of, you know, marketing within the development community as you're sending off patches and, and sort of saying, you know, hey, we're a company working on open source. This is what we're doing. It's kind of cool. Um, and there is a bit of talk, talk around total cost of ownership. Um, my opinion is that it's kind of pointless to generalize. Um, you talk about it in terms of individual projects not necessarily in terms of, you know, our oh, solution X is always more, more cost efficient than solution Y or whatever. Um, but yeah, a bit of a tangent. So yeah, focus on delivering value to your clients um, is the big one for me. Um, and Bob already covered most of that, so. Um, yeah, and, and don't get caught up in the dogma. I mean, it's, it's, it's important it open, open source is important and it, it, it is um, important for, for companies to continue giving back. But, you know, if you're going to businesses and pitching, tr trying to pitch open source when there's a proprietary solution that clearly delivers, you know, more value, that to me, you know, is a no-brainer. But anyway, any questions? Yes? utilizing sorry um, open source at the front end so are you doing a lot of connecting the two together so passing packets and etc between them uh, so connecting open source proprietary systems yeah so, yeah. so where, where you might have for instance um, um, take WCM IBM WCM right yep. uh, 
places that run it that are already tied into IBM, corporates that are already tied into IBM, they're utilising it for a back end for the more heavy transactional informations, client records, things like that, etc. When it comes to a web front end, horrible, not good, slow to implement, um, blows the budget out, blah, blah, blah. Yep. In a solution like that, um, what I'm finding, I don't go to companies and pitch, companies come to me. And what I find is the companies come to me because it's, okay, we want a PHP. We want an open source PHP front end there mm -hmm. that we can update, we can easily change things on because marketing want a Facebook like button and I can go out there and grab that code or that module and plug it into my CMS. Um, but when it comes to the sensitive data or when it comes to whatever it already is there or the 100 to 200 Java developers that they already have employed, mm -hmm. they're going to keep on doing that stuff. Yep. So it's kind of not about, about repla totally replacing. It's like, like you were saying, what suits better? Mm. So having that kind of open source PHP, say things slice in here, but then also integrated into that deeper proprietary systems. Well, well, that's it. I mean, you know, you've, you've got to keep the business happy in the end. Um, and I mean, even even part of our work with uh, City Search, like doing away with the proprietary CMS, the proprietary CMS is still there, running probably seventy percent of the site. The the node stuff is currently only running you know, maybe 30% of it. But in order to do that, we've had to integrate with all this horrible old technology that's, that's just, just yeah, nightmarish. But you know, it, and it, it can be done, and I think it's a good thing that it can be done. And you know, sooner, sooner or later, the, the pro proprietary stuff's just going to be you know, phased out. Um, and you know, it's, it's a powerful thing to be able to do that. And yeah, and it saves business money. Awesome. Uh, when you talked before about, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, when you talked before about um, it, uh, essentially educating uh, the companies to, you know, encourage them to give back upstream and, and that sort of stuff. Yep. How much of that? Um, I, I guess I'm trying to ask uh, how much percentage of that is in the work that you do. Contributing back upstream? No, uh, more, more the education of the, the corporates themselves. The education? To, yeah. Actually, for, for the clients where, where we've actually been contributing back upstream, like where they've given us the go-ahead, it's, I mean, that conversation was like a five-second, five you know, hey, if we, if we make a fix in this, you know, do you guys mind if we, you know, put it out there? Um, if it's a fix to the core and it's not something specific to their business, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, then, yeah, you know, that, that hasn't been a problem for us at all. It's not something that we have to actively manage or anything like that. It's just been a five second conversation with our direct bus business stakeholder. Um, easy, yeah. So, so um, it's not like, because I was just sure when you were saying before how much of it was a, a bit of a selling oh, sure. a part of it, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but it sounds like. Uh, no, There's a lot more saviness there. I don't know. Is that what no, you're no, no. saying? So it's, I mean, it's like anything else we do with a with a client. It's just it's just uh, conversations and, yeah. and relationships, and yeah, it's it's not actively going in there and, and saying you know, hey, you guys should be contributing all this upstream. It, yeah. It's just a natural part of what we do. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks. Is there another question up there somewhere? Uh, hi. hi. Um, in, in my job, there's a lot of weighing up what is the most value uh, short term versus long term. Um, do, you, do you have an opinion on how, uh, how you see companies panning out based on how they weight those things? You know, is it a luxury to always choose long term? And, you know, you know what scenarios would it, have you seen it fail and things like that? I, um, how do you put it? So, I haven't, I haven't really seen. It, it depends on the magnitude of the difference. Do you know what I mean? So if it's, if you, if you're kind of looking long long term, and there's an obvious difference in terms of budget expenditure and you know in order, order of magnitude, then you know, obviously, you know what are you going to do? Um, sorry, does, does does that sort of answer your question? I'm I'm not sure. Sorry, I, it's a bit of a vague question. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering. Yes, we 
We've, well, we were actually involved in, in the original build of uh, City Search, um, which used the, that horrible proprietary system. Um, and that was actually one of those situations where, you know, it, it wasn't our solution that we pitched to them. It's something that they got from somebody else that we got in to help build kind of thing. Um, and that, uh, that solution, you know, at the time it was kind of like, well, this is being used here and it's being used here, so we might as well use it here as well. Um, you know, using it here costs, you know, X million dollars or, or whatever. Um, but it's just because it was the standard that was being settled on all over the place and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so it, it quickly sort of became obvious to them that, you know, oh, going with proprietary solution. And I'm not sure that we were, we were doing much at the time to sort of push the open source side of things, um, whether there were open source options available or, or what. Um, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but <laughs> yeah. It's more so sure. Maybe you had a magic formula that said, well, yeah, maybe that's up to three times. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It, it depends on business, depends on project, depends on your relationship with, with him. Yeah. I tend to find case studies, like case studies, have been very good because I've done quite a lot of um, converting of proprietary systems into open source systems. And just, you know, how that company has experienced it, what they feel like. The level of the company as well that they're at. Um, so I think you know, Suncorp did a, did a nice kind of move away from Web Matrix into Linux and Drupal and PHP kind of thing. Um, it's a great nice story there and how they kind of did that and that transaction and stuff. Um, so I find that that helps. And by being able to stay, so like I've had Drupal stuff, but being able to say things like the White House uses it, the Australian government uses mm -hmm. it, this uses it, that uses it, people start going. Oh, okay. So it's not just some small little system plugging away here. It's actually being accepted and used worldwide. That's right. They start to listen. Like yes. once, yeah, yeah. Once you get the names attached to it, it's yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But, there's, but then you're saying that's what purpose in that other example that you said. Say that again. In the other example you're saying says it costs millions. It's yep. Because these other people, it's a pseudo standard. But it just seems like it's the side of that coin. It's that yeah, ab absolutely. It's it's the it's the same thing. You know. By, by a different name, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's it, yeah, it is it is it is the same same sort of thing, um, but you know when it, if it comes time that you know they, they need to support a, a Drupal solution versus the the commercial solution, then Drupal they they've got so many options like you know how many Drupal developers are there in Brisbane? You know? But anyway, yeah, exactly. So. Um, I think, and I think it's about those options, like creating those options, as opposed to you know railroading somebody, you know, down the proprietary path. Anyway, I think I'm out of time, so yeah. thanks very much.